It's not every day that you get a guest like Scotty James to join you for the Fireside Chat. He's a very, very busy individual. Uh, but Scotty, thank you. Thank your people. It's tough negotiations to get you here, but you're here. I'm glad, uh, you know, Quinton Peck is a, a huge fan of you, Sal, so um, he'll do anything for you. In fact, he'd probably do more for you than he'd do for me. That's why I'm here at this, uh, this fire chat, so it's great. Well, uh, I do hear that there are some agents circling that want to take advantage of mm. Quinton Peck's uh, inefficiencies, if you will. Yes, there's uh, been a few offers, uh, have considered, a few here and there. But um, you know, at the moment, I, I, yeah, I would. I break, break his, his heart. heart. I'm staying with him in good faith at the moment. Yeah. And you know, you work hard enough. You have a vision and a dream, like you see here at US Open this week. And my belief in Quinton, mm -hmm. hopefully that will come to fruition. So I'm gonna hang in there for now. All right. Well, let's get to the meat <laughs> of the matter. Um, you pretty much went unbeaten in a half pipe competition for the better part of two years. Mm until Calgary. Mm -hmm. First of all, what was it like to get into that zone and how did you maintain it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was amazing streak as everyone was saying. Um, you know, it was really interesting for me because I had a lot of like exterior pressure, I guess. Uh, a lot of people saying, you know, will he do it, will he do this, will he do that? And I always kind of go, on the mental side for me is, am I prepared to win? And that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, my snowboarding, my tricks, you know, things that I've really been working on on the mountain. It's more uh, a lot of other, um, I guess. Variables. Variables that come into Outside play. Outside factors. Exactly. Life, if you will. Yeah, they're the, they're the words I was looking for. No problem, that's that, what uh, I'm here for. That I had to. <laughs> Best with the words, makes sense. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I had to manage all those things. And, and when I did, you know, finally lose, uh, as people are saying, come second, um, it definitely hurt, but not for one second was I upset that, you know, because it was because, you know, my win streak came to an end. It was actually more, I was just disappointed in myself. I, um, and not discrediting, uh, Ruka at all, he rode absolutely amazing and he delivered some pretty special stuff that night and he he was a better man and he beat me. Um, and I think I just kind of went into that competition with not a great mentality. I was probably taking it for granted and um, you know I'm, I'm happy to admit that. And uh, someone, someone made the most of that opportunity and got me. So um, I'm back here at the US Open now, but you know, the mentality towards the whole winning streak and the whole thing is, um, it's, it's unique and it's different, but it's always, um, always got to adapt differently because it's not always the same. Does it no longer being a thing? Because in a way, the way you describe it, it's almost as if the streak was kind of everyone else's. Mm. That was the story. You still have to show up and perform either way. Does this take off, you come into this with a different sort of energy or pressure wise now that it's no longer a thing. Mm. It was, I think it was, uh, you know, maybe people that were watching, um, it was a thing, I, I, I don't know. And I didn't really think of it anything more than that. And I didn't let that uh, define, you know, how I was gonna snowboard or me as a person. And I just continued and now, you know, I'm actually feel really good this week and I'm fired up and, um, it was. It might have been a blessing in disguise. I might have needed a bit of a kick in the ass to to keep going, and I think I found it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you definitely did find it uh, in in qualifying. Uh, you're qualified number one. We're looking forward to the red gloves coming on. What's your What's your mindset, especially with this with this adapted modified pipe that really showcases the in entirety of almost like the history of of riding pipe yeah definitely um i am excited to put my red gloves on it's gets me energized gets me excited and it means it's game day or as the big dance as you would say sal so i'm really excited to be up there and um the purpose of those is obviously to go up and deliver my best performance whatever that may be and uh, you know it's it is very different up there it's a different course historically you know snowboarding has always been about a way to express yourself not all of us are the same person we haven't come from the same background how i look at snowboarding isn't the same way you look at snowboarding and these courses kind of really 
identify with us because we get the opportunity to show people how we perceive we ride these courses. And, you know, going up and seeing Danny Davis and, you know, Chase Josie, Toby Miller, like all those guys, you know, they are snowboarders. And it's really a crazy contrast between people who, you know, can just ride pipe, they prepare for five hits, and then ones that go up and can get creative and think outside the box and uh, deliver something special. So I'm really looking forward to the first modified half pipe here at the US Open. And it's gonna be a great event to, to watch and be a part of. In, in watching you ride, one of the first things I noticed was like, oh, that's right, Scotty James is a student of the entirety of snowboarding. It looked like you were really having fun on those tombstones in the 13 footer, um, sort of taking it back to, to the beginning of what snowboarding must have been for you, am I right? Yeah, 100%. And I, uh, I said yesterday, I probably learned to frontside invert when I was just out on the mountain having fun with my friends and, and you know, now we're using them in competitions and I never would have thought that. But it just goes to show all those elements that you kind of learn growing up from a young age, you just never know when you're going to use it. And that's how these, you know, these courses uh, really kind of show that in each rider. And I mean, I'm absolutely loving getting to do a frontside invert on the first tombstone into exiting into the uh, landing. And, you know, I love hitting jumps and getting to land on a jump landing is, is really awesome. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. Um, one of the things that I notice about you is you are a, a student of routine. I mean, if any, any, all anyone has to do is sort of watch your social media closely to see how much you are about routine. No matter where you are, you know, you're going to find a gym and you're going to go through your progressions. No matter what you have access to equipment-wise, that's just something that you need to do. Um, you, you see it in the way you take care of yourself, etc. And you do that with also putting so much on your plate filming your show concurrently. How, how is it that you've sort of been able to figure out how to shoulder all these responsibilities, do more to build your brand, but also be about routine that allows you to perform when it's time to perform in the pipe? Yeah, it's, uh, I think for me, first and foremost is always making sure that I'm mentally and physically prepared. And I do have a routine for sure, something I always go through. Um, and that really just helps me stay in a good frame of mind or a good mentality when I am, you know, starting to get progressively busier with the shows and, um, you know, getting a little bit more exposure away from the sport. And it's all really amazing and very cool. But I think for me, the most important thing is, uh, and I, I have a, you know, I've come from amazing family, amazing friends. And uh, if I ever, my shoes ever get too big for myself or my head, uh, I'm definitely put back in my place by my brothers and my family. So staying modest to me is huge. And, you know, I have a lot of role models and idols I look up to outside of snowboarding. You know, I look at people like Roger Federer and, you know, those guys that are still going and defying those odds that people say that they just can't do. And I mean, I look at Tom Brady and he's doing the same thing. And those guys are just so ruthless with the way they go about themselves and their profession and their expectations on themselves to deliver what they want to do. And that's how I see myself, you know, I, I want to do that and I want to do this for as long as I can in the next decade. And I know all those fine details that I'm paying attention to at the moment are going to really make sure that I can stay in this for as long as I want. So. Yeah, the routine's very important and, um, you know, of course, snowboarding is enjoyable and I really actually am enjoying it more than I ever have before and that's probably credit to making sure I pay attention to all the other details uh, away from the mountain. Mm. Um, this is, of course, a very, very special uh, event this year as we celebrate the life of Jake Burton, who not just helped to build the sport to what it is today, but really infuse a culture into the world that sort of affect the entirety of, 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 of the world. What, what does it mean to you this year uh, to, be, to be competing in that celebration of, of, of his spirit? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, this week is really special. I think, you know, more so obviously celebrating Jake's life and his vision, uh, snowboarding and Burton and, you know, Neither of us would be riding the mountain if you know he wasn't ha if he hadn't didn't have so much conviction for what he believed in, 
and I think it's uh, it's going to be an amazing week and as well you know these competing and the accolades and all these things are fantastic but at the end of the day you know that's not where snowboarding started and we all really do have to come together and, and enjoy this experience that is the Burton US Open that uh, that he created for us and I think that's really special and um, definitely out there you know he's he's given us some fantastic weather today and tomorrow from up there and thank you Jake thank you for giving us snowboarding and this uh, awesome experience to continue expressing ourselves on the mountain well we wish you the best uh, I know you're gonna have a ton of fun and thanks for taking the time thank today, you sir.